An espresso machine with an E61 group equipped with flow control puts the power of a much more expensive machine like a Dalla Corte, a La Marzocco, or a Slayer in your hands. Working with Proftec ECM a few years ago, we helped develop flow control for their prosumer level machines. But what are the basic techniques or strategies you need to know to improve your extractions? Hey, espresso lovers, Mark here from Whole Latte Love. Today, an easy to understand method for using flow control to improve your espresso. It's based on the roast level of a coffee and or the coffee's age from roast date. This method uses a single change to flow rate during an extraction. It's gonna be easy because you make the change only when you see first drips from the portafilter spouts. Beyond that, I'll have what you need to know about grind size when using flow. You know, can using flow make dialing in grind size a little easier? Maybe. Beyond this simple method, there are many other ways to use flow. You can simulate lever style shots. I've done profiles which pull more sweetness from coffees. You can even use low flow rates and a coarser grind to do coffee shots for larger drip style coffees. Now, down in the description, I've got links to my videos demonstrating those profiles and an article with graphs of those profiles plus some more information. Now, if you're not familiar, flow control is really very simple. It uses a precision valve, which replaces the stock mushroom valve of the E61 group. Close the valve completely and there's no flow. As you open the valve, the potential flow rate increases. With flow control on a machine, you can operate at the machine stock flow rate if desired. For the typical machine with a vibration pump, the stock flow rate is about seven grams per second. For rotary pump machines, the stock flow rate is about 11 grams per second. Here's a graph of flow rates for ECM and Profitech vibration pump machines as you open the valve. Notice you get the stock flow rate with the valve opened one and a quarter turns. Open the valve two full turns and you can exceed the stock flow rate by about three grams per second. And here's the same graph for the rotary pump machines. Once again, you'll get a stock flow rate with a valve open one and a quarter turns. And here again, you can exceed that rate, reaching up to 14 grams per second at one and three quarter turns open and hit a crazy, you know, don't go there, 30 grams per second at two full turns open. Now, if you're using another manufacturer's E61 machine, flow rates at various valve positions will likely be different. Use a link up here to read how to measure flow rates. Now, if reading simply is not your thing, it's simply opening the valve to a position, running the pump for 20 seconds, measuring the amount of water that comes out in grams or milliliters, and dividing that by 20 to get the flow rate in grams per second at that valve position. Now, once you know the flow rates for your machine, you're ready to start profiling with flow. Now, I've been working with flow since before its release about three years ago on ECM Profitec machines. Beyond that, for the past couple of years, I've had the pleasure of working with Dalla Corte Coffee Pros, Fabrizio Sencion Ramirez of Mexico, Danilo Lodi from Brazil, Cole Toro of Canada, and Simone Guidi of Italy. Among those guys are WBC champions, competition sensory judges, and roasters. They know coffee and are at the forefront of using flow control to make exceptional espresso. With them, I've discussed flow theory and profiled espresso on top-line commercial machines like Dalla Cortez Mina and their incredible new Zero multi-group commercial machine with Flow, which had its U.S. debut at Coffee Fest in San Antonio in mid-June. All right, so how do we do some super simple basic flow profiling based on roast level or bean age that's gonna make a huge difference in your espresso? First know that we're not going to focus on a precise flow rate, but instead we're gonna think of flow in terms of it being low, medium, or high. For ECM and Profitec machines, regardless of pump type, you're at a low flow rate at a quarter to half turn valve opening. Medium flow at one half to three quarters turns open. For high flow rates, it's one and a quarter to two turns open on vibration pump machines and one to one and a half turns on rotary pump machines. Notice you do have higher potential flow rates available on rotary pump machines. Also note, these valve positions are for ECM Profitec machines. If using machines from other manufacturers, you will need to measure your flow rates for those as I described earlier. 
Here are the basic guidelines for lighter roast and or coffees that are within the first few weeks from roast state. For those, start with low flow and finish with a medium flow rate. For darker roasts or bean blends and or coffees that are beyond four weeks from roast state, try starting with a high flow rate and finish with a low flow rate. But Mark, you ask, how do I know when to change the flow rate? Well, like I said before, we're gonna do it when we see first drip. We're gonna use that as a signal to make that flow rate change. To demonstrate a profile on a fresh roast, I'm using our very own Crema Wave. It's fairly fresh at about two weeks from roast, but you could use the same profile on a light roast coffee as well. So I'll set my flow control at one quarter turn open and start the shot. I'll let this low flow rate continue until I see the first drips of espresso from the spouts. When I see those drips, that's the cue to make the change. So I'll open the valve to three quarters turn for a medium flow rate and let the shot finish. That initial low flow rate decreases the brightness of shots pulled from fresh or light coffees by allowing CO2 locked up in the beans to off gas. The medium flow rate then pulls the lipids and carbohydrates from the coffee to put more sweetness and fruity flavors in your cup. The result is a more balanced espresso that doesn't slap your tongue with acidity. To demonstrate a profile for an older coffee or dark roast, I'm using Berry House Arusto Scoro, which is a dark roast. For that, I'm opening to one and a quarter turns for a high flow rate to start. That gets me about 11 grams per second on this rotary pump ECM Synchronica. If I were using a vibration pump machine, I'd go all the way to two full turns open to get a high flow rate. As soon as I see the first drips, that's the signal to turn to a half turn open for a low flow rate. The initial high flow rate gets into this type of coffee, which tends to be more soluble and less dense. Then the low flow extracts the good sugars and oils, but leaves behind more solids, which can cause bitter or stale flavors and an earthy mouthfeel. This profile produces a more balanced cup from dark roasts and coffees that you know are maybe a little past their prime. The result is gonna be a more balanced cup. So let's recap those basic profiling methods. For fresh or light roast coffee, start with a low flow until first drip. When you see that, move to a medium flow. For dark roast or older coffee, start with a high flow rate until first drip, then move to a low flow rate. Now again, these are basic general guidelines and given the incredible range of coffees available, not every coffee fits neatly into a category. But these are a starting point and half the fun is experimenting and seeing how changing the flow affects taste in your cup. So what about grind size? Well, when I'm using flow on a new coffee, I generally dial in grind size using a stock flow rate first. Now what usually happens is low flow rates to start benefit from a slightly finer grind size and high flow rates to start benefit from a slightly coarser grind size. So after initial dialing, I may make a very small grind size adjustment going a hair finer if starting low flow and a hair coarser if starting high flow. But you can use flow to compensate a bit for imperfect grind size. This is especially true with very fresh coffees, which can change rapidly, needing regular tweaks of grind size. Now, take some practice, but visual cues day to day can prompt subtle adjustment of the flow control during an extraction. If you notice a shot coming a little faster or slower, you could decrease or increase the flow to compensate without having to change your grind size. So that's a really basic, easy method for quick success using flow based on coffee roast level and age from roast. To dive deeper into flow profiling, check out my links in the description. As always, if you have questions on flow or anything coffee, use those comments and I'd be happy to get you an answer. I'm Mark, if you like this stuff, be sure and subscribe to the channel and thank you for watching and I hope to see you back here soon for more of the best on everything coffee brought to you by Whole Latte Love.